In today's macro photography tutorial, we're shooting something particularly cool, the surface of ice. Stick around and I'll get started in just a sec. Hi guys, I'm Ben from Adapt Looks, and welcome back to another macro photography tutorial where today we're shooting a particularly tricky subject. Ice is notoriously difficult to photograph. It's transparent slash translucent. Uh, it's also wet so the surfaces can be reflective and of course it melts. So we have a time limit for how long we have to uh, actually get our photographs before our ice has changed or completely melted. All of that is going to be overcome in today's video. I've got some really great tips for getting some cool abstract shots of the surfaces of ice cubes. We're going to make them look a little bit like frozen alien planets. Uh, we'll have to stretch our imagination just a little bit, but either way, it's a really cool technique that we're going to use to photograph ice. So first things first, you're obviously going to need some ice to photograph and I'm photographing ice cubes today. These have just been uh, in my freezer. Uh, I bought a big bag of ice and they've been sat there for quite a while. I have frozen some of my own as well, but I think these ones are going to work just fine. Uh, now there's a few different ways to freeze your own ice cubes and the way that you freeze your water will make a difference to how they look. If you're using a cheap ice maker, uh, you'll know that they tend to come out very, very cloudy. And that's because of the amount of minerals, impurities, and air bubbles inside the ice as it freezes. So to reduce that, you want to filter your water and maybe, maybe boil it a couple of times before you put it in the freezer. Also, the uh, slower your ice actually freezes inside the freezer, uh, the more transparent it's going to be because it gives uh, the ice more time to uh, get those bubbles out of its system. So I think my ice has a, quite a good um, balance between being transparent and having some bubbles and interesting textures on the inside. Uh, but uh, one ice cube is not going to cut it. This one is already uh, melting in my hands and it's not going to last very long. So what I'm actually looking for is the ice cubes that have frozen together. I want a big bundle of ice cubes that I can explore as a single unit. I want to move it around in front of my camera, look at all of the different surfaces, and hopefully uh, we'll find some interesting textures and features on the surface of the ice. So the next question is where to actually put your ice in front of the camera. How are we going to hold this subject in place so that we can photograph it? And I'm actually focus stacking today, so I'm going to want to take multiple pictures without the ice moving. As you can see, simply placing it down on a surface on my plate here uh, means that the ice will slide around of its own accord as it starts to melt, uh, which is no good. And uh, placing it in a clamp like this is going to require a very, very thin piece of ice. And as that ice melts, Else, the clamp will eventually push it out and it will fly across the room, which I've already learnt. Um, I also tried to use my uh, retort stand here to hold an ice cube, but I found that the, uh, the colours here uh, were affecting my photograph and there was a very limited viewport of where I could actually see down onto my ice cube. My solution is actually to get a black plate and place it down as a much larger structure. So as you can see, we've got this black plate now uh, and a lot of ice cubes all frozen together. And this actually creates a little bit of frost on the surface as well. If you don't want this frost, you can just run this whole thing under the tap for a moment and most of this will disappear, but it might crack your ice cubes a little bit as well, which might be interesting to look at. Uh, but for now, I'm going to keep my uh, frozen together ice cubes like this. What this is going to do is make it much more stable in my plate. You can see that it's not wanting to slide around half as much. It's not as stable as it could be, but there's a lot of different ways that you can position this uh, group of ice cubes without it moving too much. Obviously, this is going to uh, change as the ice starts to melt, so we need to get on with a little bit of photography. 
So here's my camera setup for today and to the uninitiated this might look a little bit complicated but I assure you it's not too bad. Uh, most of what we've got going on here is this focus stacking rail on the bottom. This is just a manual focus stacking rail so that we can move our camera through our image and take a series of photographs that we can then stack later on in some software. My camera body is a Sony a7 III and on the front of that is a reversed lens setup. So I've actually got a uh, Nikon um, to Sony adapter on the front of here because we uh, built this setup for a Nikon camera and then changed to Sony. Uh, so you don't necessarily need that part. What's in front of that though is a set of extendable extension tubes. So these can uh, change actually how much magnification you're getting from this setup. On the very front, we've got a reversed 50 mil prime lens. So this is a very old manual lens. We've still got an aperture ring on here uh, and that's reversed onto the extension tubes. That means with the uh, 50 mil lens, which would usually be quite good for portraits or landscapes, is now really good for macro. Uh, the part where you would usually attach it to the camera and uh, be looking at the sensor from inside here, that's flipped around. So we're making things very, very small, much, much bigger onto our sensor. Uh, on the front of here, I've actually got an elastic band holding open the aperture clip. So uh, that allows us to still be able to change the aperture inside this manual lens. Um, whichever manual lens you get, you may or may not have to uh, uh, jerry-rig something like that, but this is a very cheap, very effective way of getting a lot of magnification. This whole setup is just the perfect amount of magnification for taking a look at our ice cubes. Uh, you can change the lens, you can change the uh, the extension tubes to move in a little bit further if you want, but I'm going to be using this one all the way out to make the most out of that alien landscape feel of our ice cubes. To keep everything stable, I've placed all of that on top of a tripod and I'm using a remote shutter release cable to take my photographs so that I don't wobble my setup too much as I'm shooting. I've placed my bowl up on top of a box, raised it up a little bit, uh, and this is our working distance for today. It's quite reasonable, there's quite a lot of space here, uh, and I'm able to move my ice around inside my bowl quite freely uh, so that I can take a look and explore the surfaces of this ice. Uh, now the ice is really, really interesting up close. All of the bumps and the, uh, the different ice cubes as they join together almost creates hills and some of the, um, the frost as it's formed creates these valleys and even um, great big crevasses down into what uh, seems to be the landscape of the ice. However, something's missing. I think what we need is a little bit of color and a little bit of light. My lighting is going to come from the Adaptlux Studio. This is the Adaptlux control pod sat on a little mini tripod and I've lowered this down so that it's about the same height as my ice. Uh, now into this, I'm going to plug a few lighting arms and I want extra light, but I also want some color. So we've got a couple of options of how to do that. If I plug in a white lighting arm, I can flex that around and then place a color filter on the end, so we've got some nice purple light now. However, uh, if I want a little bit more vivid light, I can actually plug in a uh, directly colored LED. So this is a uh, blue LED lighting arm, which is creating blue light. I can still diffuse that if I want diffused blue light, um, but what we're going to do here is play around with the diffusion, the color, and the direction of this light. As I mentioned at the beginning, the ice is translucent. So we're going to have the ability to shine some light through our ice cubes. And I think that's going to be critical for creating those icy landscapes. Uh, a lot of the time when you look at uh, glaciers and large ice sheets, uh, the ice is uh, seemingly glowing from within as the sunlight penetrates the ice from a different direction travels through. It creates this sort of blue hue within the ice. Now we don't have enough ice to naturally create that blue, so we're going to be using the blues of the Adaptilux Studio to recreate a little bit of internal glow. We can then also go a little bit crazy and imagine that maybe the atmosphere is a little bit different to our own, add some pinks and some reds, uh, maybe even some more wild colors like green, and see what that does to our shot. Of course, we can also stick with white light if we want to. It's quite easy to change all of these lights out as you please, and we'll still have plenty of time to do that while our ice is melting. 
So I've placed my blue lighting arm undiffused actually underneath the ice. I've then got a white lighting arm diffused on the front here and as you can see on the back of the camera it's creating that blue glow from within. Now what we're not getting here is the full effect that this is going to create in our still images because we've not stacked our photograph yet. Most of this is out of focus. We've got a very, very shallow depth of field. We're only picking out a few of the most um, sharp and in focus little crystals of ice. But once we start focus stacking, we're going to get all of that landscape in focus. Now, the way that we're going to be doing this is by moving our camera through our image. So as I move my, um, my focus stacking rail just here, you can see that the focus changes. I'm going to be taking photographs at every little interval along the way, and then I'll be putting them into Helicon Focus to stack them all together. If you want to know a little bit more about focus stacking and how you can take your images from something like this to something like this, I will link up in the top right hand corner to a video that goes into a lot more detail about how to achieve that. I'll put a link down in the description to the software that you'll need to do it and I will link at the end of the video to a few more examples of focus stacking setups. Suffice to say all of this goes hand in hand with our lighting to create these strange glowing structures where the ice is uh, reflecting and refracting the light within it and uh, placing the light in different places is going to give you different effects. So shining light through from within the ice is going to uh, create one effect, but then placing your light in front of the ice will actually reflect the light a little bit differently. And you can combine those two styles uh, to get two different shades of color reflecting from your ice. That might be white and blue to get that glacial look, or it might be some more exotic colors to try and get that more alien planet look. Either way, this is a really cool way to experiment with your ice photography, adding a little bit of light and color and moving those light sources around uh, can create some really cool varied effects. A lot of my ice is really starting to melt now uh, and as it does it actually becomes clearer and reveals a lot of the structure and cracks within the ice itself. Uh, something else that it does is start to pool water on the surface of the ice. That adds to those reflections especially if you're placing a large diffused light source behind the ice, it's going to reflect that light source in all sorts of weird and wonderful ways. I've taken a lot of shots of my ice today and uh, they look really, really good stacked. I'm definitely glad that I took the time to focus stack those shots. The depth of field is just not enough to do these images justice when you're this close up. Let me know down in the comments whether you've done any kind of ice photography before, whether or not you've focus stacked and whether or not you introduced any colored light. Um, if you enjoyed my shots today, make sure to hit the like button and subscribe for lots more macro photography tutorials, ideas and inspiration coming in the future. That is all that I've got time for for now though guys. Thank you very much for watching and I'll see you next time.